let's organize for the Green New Deal. Moving towards a better tomorrow, brought to you by Team ALC. So let's go over the agenda for today. What is the Green New Deal? We're gonna go over what the goals of the Green New Deal are, why organize for the Green New Deal, what are some examples of Green New Deal organizing, how to organize, and then we're gonna do a little activity towards the end. It's gonna be a group activity, should be exciting. Uh, looking forward to it. So what is the Green New Deal? The Green New Deal is a jobs justice center plan to decarbonize the US economy within 10 years. It is one of the only plans put forward by uh, put forward that is actually in line with scientific consensus and the UN's IPCC report. It also focuses on creating the maximum amount of prosperity for working people and marginalized communities in the process. So we're just going to look at a little snippet of uh, what the Green New Deal is by um, from ALC. According to UN scientists, we only have 12 years to stop a global warming catastrophe. Mm -hmm. What is the Green New Deal? And why do we have to care about it right now? So the Green New Deal is a jobs and justice centered plan to decarbonize the U.S. economy within 10 years. Um, it is one of the only plans put forward that's actually in line with scientific consensus and the U.N.'s IPCC report. Um, and it also focuses on creating the maximum amount of prosperity for working people and marginalized communities in the process. The Green New Deal is a non-binding resolution. A non-binding resolution means it's a plan with the aim on sparking a national conversation and action around the urgent need to address climate change. But the Green New Deal, it's not just a climate plan. It's also about jobs. Millions of high quality, well-paying jobs to rebuild our middle class and transform the current economy of haves and have nots. It's about justice for the workers who labored uh, in order to power our country, for the frontline and vulnerable communities that experienced and continue to experience the worst of climate change. It's about decarbonization, uh, increased ambition and urgency to achieve 100% clean energy in 10 years or sooner and electricity, transportation, and buildings. The Green New Deal, it's about jobs, justice, and decarbonization. The Green New Deal is all about people over profit. It's about community. It's about creating a better world. What it's not, as you might hear in uh, mainstream media out there, it's not a socialist takeover. It's not too expensive. It's not a bill or law. And it's not a plan to take away your beef and your cars. What it is, it's a resolution, a roadmap to follow, a commitment at all levels to address the economic and environmental crisis. But what does this mean exactly for our communities? Our communities currently are facing an economic crisis. In a city like Queens, where we have 2.3 million residents who, who average 33,000 a year of income per person versus the national average of 65,000. And we continue to see similar patterns here in the Bronx with 1.4 million residents who are live, who 26% of people live in poverty compared to the 11.4% national rate. Our communities are facing environmental racism. In a city like Bronx, where 15.5% of Bronx residents suffer from asthma, compared to 9.2% of New York City residents versus 8.9 across the nation. These numbers lead us to higher morbidity rates and higher hospitalization rates. Our communities 
are facing an environmental crisis. Like the crisis we faced up in down in Texas last year. Or the crisis we, fear we faced here at home in our own district last year as well. Now scientists say we may be able, we may see uh, these weather events more frequently. And while we're going through that, our communities continue to face rising temperatures, rising sea levels, and ice-free Arctic Ocean. By mid 21st century, increased hurricane intensity, more droughts and heat waves, changes in precipitation patterns, dramatic changes in agriculture, and the national economies. But the Green New Deal will change that. It will provide tens of thousands of green jobs, dedicated public housing investments, net zero greenhouse gas emissions for all new buildings, tackle environmental racism, eliminate carbon emissions from power plants. But how do we get there? The Green New Deal ultimately is a framework of goals and principles for writing legislation to combat climate change. And so a lot of what the Green New Deal will be is ultimately up to you and I and the leaders we vote for. The Green New Deal lays out the following goals. Clean air and water, climate and community resiliency, healthy food, access to nature, a sustainable environment, create millions of high paying jobs, achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions, invest in infrastructure and industry, promote justice and equity by stopping current preventing future and repairing historic oppressions of various communities. And in the resolution that is the Green New Deal, it states that these goals are being aimed to achieve for every single person in the United States. And that is what the Green New Deal is about. It's about community, it's about fairness, justice for all. By reimagining the way we build our communities. I'm going to go through a couple examples of how communities all across the nation are already reimagining the way they build our communities, the way we plan our communities in tangent with the environment around us. Los Ange Angeles City Council, um, uh, they, um, they're moving to phase out and ban new oil wells and phase out existing ones. In Florida, they invested in a water cleaning project in order to clean the pollution in their rivers. Now, before I go on, all these projects and information resources, you're gonna find in a resource document that we prepared for everyone um, and we'll share later in the presentation. So don't worry. <laughs> You can look at Texas and their Clean Coast Texas uh, program initiative, where they aim to manage stormwater, strive for resiliency, and protect Texas's coastal areas. We can also look nearby in New York City uh, at their open street programs, where New York City first launched their open street program. Uh, to make to achieve um, to make the city's streets car free. This open streets initiative has allowed New Yorkers to reclaim, repurpose city streets for alternative uses through the Department of Transportation's new public space programming. And these are all ways where cities all across the country are reimagining the way we live, the way we build, and the way we interact with our communities and surrounding environment. And there are a whole bunch of projects going on uh, all across the country. And again, we will share a resource document at the end. But it's gonna take a collaborative effort and it's gonna take a collaborative effort with frontline and vulnerable communities, with labor unions and worker cooperatives, with community organizations and leaders. 
especially to include communities who are particularly impacted by the effects of climate change, which include older Americans, low-income communities, and communities that live near the coastline, which we have a few of them in our own district. It's also going to take a collaborative effort with everyone here, with all of us and with all of you. Because we're in this together and a better world is possible. And because of you guys, a better world is definitely possible. And the Green New Deal is already here. And we're gonna go over some examples of the Green New Deal, some projects and organizing efforts that are already going on. Um, you can get involved in some of these. Again, we'll link the, uh, we'll link the, we'll link how to get involved in some of the, in the document that we'll share. Some of uh, these efforts include Green New Deal for public housing. So being that the Green New Deal is a roadmap, the general plan, you're gonna have, we're gonna see a lot of variations of Green New Deal projects, campaigns, policies, um, all sorts of things. Ultimately though, what makes it for the Green New Deal is, to, is the aim to achieve the goals that were laid out, clean air and water, community resiliency, good green jobs, and so forth. Another variation is the Green New Deal for public schools, as proposed by Congress member Bowman. We also have various uh, versions of local Green New Deals in various localities, municipalities. There are also campaigns in various states um, which aim to achieve some of the goals laid out by the Green New Deals. And here in New York, one of those campaigns is public power. Some of you may have heard of public power in the news recently. Sorry about that. But the public power campaign is a camp was a campaign launched by NYC BSA. It's now expanded to a statewide coalition. And they have three bills in Albany that will wrestle the grid away from private interest into public control. Community cleanups are also a way to get involved. And you can also sign up for one of our community cleanups that we have going on for the last year or so. We have them once a month. Um, and of course, you all can uh, create a cleanup in your own communities. And we'll get a little bit to that later on. So how can you organize for the Green New Deal back home? Uh, it's important to identify a problem in your community. So when you're asking yourself, what can I do to organize for the Green New Deal? It's really important to reflect and ask what's an issue, what's a problem in our community, in my neighborhood, in my block, in my school, anywhere uh, where you're a part of, or you see an issue, um, identify that issue, why is that an issue? And does it have any personal significance to you? What does it mean to you? Because you may share that same struggle or issue with people in your community. Identify a group or groups being affected by this issue. Uh, and this can be your communities, this can be uh, your class, this can be neighbors, this can be whatever you're, you feel uh, particularly a part of, right? Um, a community can be all sorts of things, it, but it's important to connect that issue to that group of people. And now once you identify an issue, once you have uh, your community, the group of people, you wanna get together, come up with a plan and come up with a solution. And we're gonna see these steps in action right now. So the Astoria Power Plan, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Astoria Power Plant uh, was a proposed plan last year. And for those of you who were here last year, you probably were involved with these efforts. Uh, the NRG Astoria Power Plant was a proposed dirty power plant in Queens that would have polluted our air even more. But Team AOC, along with uh, local stakeholders and community members, organized 
and shut down the NRG Astoria proposal last year. So how, how do we go about that? Well, we identified an issue. In 2021, Team AMC was made aware of the NRG proposal thanks to the community. So we were able to identify this issue, be brought up to speed, and start planning around it. On April 24th, 2021, the Stop NRG Coalition held an Earth Day rally against the proposed proposal. So after months of planning uh, and organizing with members and organizations and stakeholders in the community, they got together, identified an issue, identified a community being impacted by that issue. They got together, they started a plan to organize. Um, and this ultimately led to a series of events and actions and organizing efforts that included uh, the Earth Day Rally. September 16, 2021 was the last day for NRG public comments. Team AOC helped sign up community members. So part of their organizing efforts was to get community involved. It was to get community members to get to sign up, to say public comments, give public comments, um, getting community members more involved in the process and educating community. October 27th, 2021, the Astoria NRG permit was denied, a major win for our communities. And so we can see and reflect on this cycle. We identify the issue, we identify a community, group of people being impacted by that issue. And then we got together to organize, plan, and see it through. And what that led was a community coalition that fought and won a major win for our communities, for our earth, and for our neighbors and our kids. Um, and if you were a part of these efforts last year, huge, huge shout outs to everyone. Um, this couldn't have been possible without you. Now it's your turn. Um, this organizing activity, I'm going to go over it real quick. Take 10 minutes to think about issues in your communities. They can be real issues you have faced, are facing, or you did face, or you can also come up with a scenario. The takeaway is to be able to practice identifying an issue amongst a community and or groups of people and come up, up with a plan towards a solution. So um, if everyone can take 10 minutes, you can grab a sheet of paper, write it on your phone, up to you. But we really want you guys to really think through these steps, um, practice identifying an issue, practice, um, you know, identifying a group of people and coming up with a plan. Now you can tell us about some of the efforts you've had in the past, some wins you may have had, um, or you can tell us of some issues that you're going through now. Um, and again, if you don't have any of those, you can also just come up with a scenario that you've heard of, you've seen, you read about, all up to you. The takeaway is to be able to practice these steps. How does the Green New Deal consider necessary changes to financial and capital markets to shift capital to reward sustainable and socially equitable companies? Um, do you want me to take that one, Carlos? Do you want to take that one? Sure. Go for it. Cool. Um, so one of the things about the Green New Deal is the Green New Deal recognizes that the profit motive is inherently incompatible with like assessing and actually fighting against climate change. Um, because so long as we have an economy that is structured around extracting fossil fuels, extracting resources, right, that's always going to result in people wanting to make money off of that. And making money is how our entire economy works, right? You got to make the most money in order to, to have the most money, in order to have the most capital, in order to keep bringing the capital back in to make more money, right? So we have to stop that. Um, one of the best ways that I've seen actually work to help disrupt that flow of capital are projects like public power in New York City. Um, that Carlos mentioned that in a couple slides earlier, but just to go a little deeper into that, while you are looking at this uh, sheet too, public power is a proposal to do exactly what it sounds like. It's to make our power generation publicly owned. 
so that instead of power generation being done for profit, it is done by the state of New York. Um, the state of New York already has a government entity that does that. It's called the New York Power Authority. Uh, the New York Power Authority is a New Deal program that was started in the 30s to build new power projects across New York State. They built a lot of hydropower, which is great, right? But then uh, what happened is like later on during privatization in the 80s and 90s, uh, the state of New York said that the New York Power Authority could not build any new power generation facilities. So you see how this causes a problem, right? Like we want to build solar and wind and hydro and all these new renewable energy sources, but you know, right now in our current economy, unless it's profitable, people won't do that. So uh, organizers with New York City DSA, a lot of different folks across the state came together and they proposed a bill called the Build Public Renewables Act, which almost passed the assembly this year, did not pass, but we're very hopeful it will go in again next year. And what that would have done was that would have given the New York Power Authority the ability to actually build renewable energy itself, publicly owned, not for profit, owned by the state to generate cheap renewable electricity for New Yorkers. Um, for those of you who live in New York, you all know Con Edison. Uh, for those of you who are not in New York, Con Edison is our local power monopoly. Uh, they're crazy expensive, power goes out all the time. If you're in California, uh, they're basically our uh, PG&E. So that probably gets a lot of people in there <laughs> pretty angry. It gets me angry too as a Californian. Um, so that's basically what we're going up against here too. So as you're thinking about this organizing training activity and identifying issues, I mean, these can be as big or as small as you want, right? Like, uh, Carlos went through the, the Astoria power plant, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit too since we're on this topic. So with that power plant, that was a power plant uh, that was going to be built on top of an existing plant in Astoria, which is where I live in Queens, right by the water, beautiful neighborhood, come visit. Um, but we already have right now a, a peaker plant there that burns oil and gas. And that's one of the big things that contributes to the really high asthma rates that Carlos talked about at the start of the presentation, right, that we see 15% of kids in the Bronx getting asthma. I mean, that's right across the river from Astoria there, right? Astoria is also known as Asthma Alley. So this energy company, NRG, they're based in Texas. They're not New York company. They wanted to come in and put a new peaker plant in that was going to burn fracked gas. They're trying to say, oh, fracked gas, it's a bridge fuel. It's clean. It's fine. It's good. No, like we know fracked gas is just as bad, sometimes if not worse than fossil fuel burning. So, uh, People identified that as an issue. Local community members, just regular folks, right, started coming together and talking to each other about, hey, we don't want this power plant in our neighborhood. New York City DSA gets involved, Sane Energy gets involved, the Sierra Club gets involved, um, NYPIRG, the New York Public Interest Research Group gets involved, right? Eventually, our campaign gets involved too. Uh, and we work with these community groups to put on a deep canvas program that talked to community members across New York 14 and got people to get involved and actually go into community um, feedback sessions with NRG to tell them how much they hated this proposal. 6,000 people ended up giving testimony. Um, and then that was really the big reason why the, the permit for the plant got pulled. So as you're thinking about this training activity that Carlos has up on the screen here, um, identify that issue, right? Maybe it's a power plant, maybe it's a, a really dirty creek, there's a lot of uh, litter on the beach, right? Where do you live? How are you impacted by that? Like, what is your personal stake in this? This is very important for organizing. Uh, who is a group of people impacted by this? What are some solutions? What are action items you can work on? Great. So let's join Green New Deal efforts that are already happening. We have actually have a tracker on our ALC page. Yeah. Yep. So we have this website. The Green New Deal is here an AOC Green New Deal website where you can find all sorts of information, resources. We even have this tracker of Green New Deal projects and efforts going on all over. So let's look at a couple. We have here in our own backyard, referring to our district. Um, we have a coastal preservation project by our very own Congresswoman, AOC which aims to stabilize and restore uh, public access platforms that are in dire need of repair on Flushing Bay. We have a couple other ones. We have one here in Texas. Um, we have one here in Texas where it's requesting funding for climate impact research at the Texas State University. We also have some here in Hawaii uh, where this is for Nature cons uh, Conservancy. Uh, to protect uh, coastal areas and reefs. 
we also have a bunch of projects out here in Cali. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit just so I can show you how this map works. You see me zooming out, you can see all sorts of projects all across the country. And if we zoom in to Cali, you can zoom into any state to see some projects going on. You can just click and it'll give you uh, some information, breakdown of the project going on. And we have these for uh, multiple states all across the country, including Hawaii, which is all the way out here. And this website is for everyone here. We'll take a look at your own time. So a website can, uh, contains more information, more resources, including the five main goals of the Green New Deal, um, as well as the actual resolution. So you can check all of these projects going on. You can check if they're going on in your own state. You can check if they're going on elsewhere outside of the United States. Some of these projects include job training programs, um, they include rail expansions, bike infrastructure, efforts to protect the uh, cities from the effects of climate change, protecting coastal areas, all sorts of projects, ultimately with the ultimate goal to achieve uh, some of the goals laid out by the Green New Deal. And I'd like to leave you guys with this. We're going to find creative ways to make sure we can get this done and fight climate change so that we can secure jobs and environmental justice for our communities. The Green New Deal is possible, Green New Deal is here, and the Green New Deal is going to bring us a better tomorrow because of all of us here. And a better world is possible because of you.